Hi there, my name is David Batsoffin and I host a travel blog called Travel and Things. And today, um, this is sort of the epitome of what COVID-19 caused during the major part of the lockdown this year. And that is people to pivot, change from one um, source of income to another. There was a company that I dealt with for some years while I was on radio called JB Train Tours. Unfortunately, they had to close down because of COVID and the lack of trains. But lo and behold, Johan Badenhorst has reinvented himself with a company called Platterland Tours. And this puts you in your own car out on the road with Johan as your guide. Not in your car, but in the lead vehicle. So welcome, uh, Johan. How are you doing? Good morning, David. Thanks. And good to speak to you again. Uh, you know, we, like you mentioned, we had uh, contact for many, many years. So it's nice and, and, and uh, a privilege to talk to you again. So Platteland Tours, as I said to you before we started this interview, um, I, I'm in love with small town South Africa, Johan. I believe that nobody needs to go outside of our borders for a holiday ever again. Anything that we need is right here in this country and specifically in the Platteland. So tell us a little bit about that. And what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to share your screen and share some pictures. And we'll talk about the pictures as we go through our chat this morning. No, thanks for the opportunity, David. V very briefly, like you've mentioned, you know, I've been involved in rail tourism for many, many decades. And uh, due to the current COVID-19 situation that we're in, in February, we had to close down. No trains were running anymore. And until today, no trains. I'm talking about long distance overnight passenger trains. So uh, we had to make a plan. And of course, um, like yourself, I love the, the Platteland. And I've noticed, um, you know, the, the decline in the Platteland, especially in the tourism industry, guest houses, road stalls, you name it, all stand, standing empty, standing closed. And uh, I thought, and I've been thinking about this for quite quite a time, even in the days when I had the train tour company, is to host tours by cars for people who do not want to fly anymore or cannot fly or, or don't like traveling by a bus or don't traveling or like traveling by train, you know. And of course, many people have got cars or they've got combis or they've got four by fours or four by twos. Put them in their own car. Let's travel in a convoy together with the leader in front. It's a safe environment. And of course, we travel the back roads. And by meaning that is, for example, if we travel from, from Johannesburg down to Durban, we tend to travel on the N3. You will speed the 600 kilometers in six hours, maybe stop in Harry Smith, and that is it. What okay. we do now is that all the way we, we go into these small towns and we drive through it. And of course, we, we cannot stop in every small town. But where, uh, where we plan en route, we do stop and we support the local people. If we sleep en route, we sleep in the smaller guest houses and smaller lodges, uh, avoiding the big uh, um, commercial hotels and, and lodges. Try to spend a bit of our money on the Platteland. And mm. of course, you know, there are ma so many hidden gems on the Platteland, on the back roads. And I experienced it again just three weeks ago when I took a tour down to Namakulan Flowers where we did the back roads. And all those people that went with us, they've been to Namakulan Flowers and all of them told us afterwards, listen, we've seen places that we never knew existed. What about <laughs> being visited before? So yeah, the idea is go to the Platteland, spend our money there, um, enjoy the local people, eat the local food, and enjoy what they have to offer down in the Platteland. My, my mom-in-law phoned me just before we went to, to air this morning saying, she's got water blomiki briedi for me. Um, do I want yeah, some? I said to her, it's just a pity yeah. I have an interview. Don't, don't eat it all before lunch. <laughs> yeah, I'll come, gee, I'll come by and collect later. I wonder how many people do know about the Blomiki Brady. You know, this is something very popular down in the Western Cape, obviously. It is. It's not, not so much up here in Johannesburg. One of the local supermarkets gets uh, the Brady, the um, Vata Blomikis from uh, every now and again. And, and my mom in law tends to find them and then make it for us, which is really delicious uh, and something very special. What, um, what, what, a, what a privilege to, to eat it. Eh? 
and, and to I enjoy tell you, it. People, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that people go to the Flatland, uh, Johan, and they look at food on a menu. I mean, I was in Puff other a couple of years ago, stayed at a hotel um, there, and had one of the best pizzas I've ever eaten in my life um, at the Puff other hotel. Who knew? They also did a great yeah. steak. Uh, we were there for a couple of nights doing a, a TV shoot. And, and the food was tremendous. And the people are just so nice and so willing to chat and share their stories with you. Um, we all know that most of the major hotels will put a chocolate on your pillow at night, or some of them will. Well, I walked into my room, Johan, and there was a basket. It looked like a tuck shop had been opened in my room. I've never Is seen so true? many different sweets and packets of crisps, you name it. Yeah. It was like a yeah, bucket. Yeah. I took most of it, brought, brought it home for my wife and I to share. It was enough for like four people. And that was the was chocolate it? on a pillow. <laughs> no, the normal one, yeah, yeah. I must, I, I must admit now, or I must uh, differ a little bit from you. That's a concern to me. You know, see, you, you had a pizza in Pofada. Pofada yeah. is not pizza world, you know, it is... It is lamb world, you know, and I one know. of the things I, I normally recommend people and I actually support them and encourage them, if, when you're in a certain area, eat their local food, you know, I but I do understand. Do. I normally yeah, like do. You said, I, you, I, I think it was the alliteration of having a pizza in Pofada, which was the only reason <laughs> rather than lamb in Pofada, which didn't quite yeah. rhyme very nicely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you've been there for a few nights, so I do understand. Yes. I will. Oh, no, 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 no. Then, this one. You, you know, uh, coming back uh, from a trip to Cape Town some years ago, stopped off also at a working sheep farm. And um, the, the owner said to me, look, you're not alone here this evening. Uh, we've got some Australian sheep farmers here and you is, and I both know the jokes about Australian sheep farmers and they started the jokes, but I have never seen so much lamb on a braai, A, with so little salad so many rolls at the end of the evening there was i don't think there was a piece of meat left but there were still mounds of salad and no rolls <laughs> the carbs yeah. and the protein yeah. gone the greenery they weren't interested in <laughs> correct 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 yeah it's like the old namibian saying eh? if you're looking for veggie eat the chicken exactly <laughs> I, I used to teach my daughter that because because chicken is ain't like a vegetable, you know, and specifically on the platter <laughs> land. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Jan, would you like to share some of your images with us? Let's start with those. Um, we, you can start with a picture of what platter land tours is, because I know there's a phone number and some contact details on that. So let's start there and I, give people time I, maybe I, I, to to jot down the details. Uh, we will mention yeah. them later during the course of our chat. And uh, somebody just walked in to say hello, and she's left again. <laughs> oh, gee, she can greet. She's welcome. Welcome, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll, 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 I'll, I'll share with you a few pictures of uh, uh, Namakoland. Okay. The trip that we, that we did recently. Um, just, you know, to put it into perspective, like I've mentioned to you, is that we closed our business in, in February this year that JB trained to us. And of course, at that stage, uh, David, I thought, okay, I've had enough of tourism. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's retire and do something else. And, and I will tell you what, I'm, what, what the else is that I'm busy doing. But after two months, you know, um, <laughs> I spoke to so many of my old service providers and they said, listen, on, we're suffering. In what sense can you help me? So this is how it all started again, you know, right. uh, no, no time to think about a name, uh, but, you know, Platteland suited so fine because, you know, countryside in our, in our country is, is so important, you know, mm. this is where our food comes from, this is where our meat comes from, this is where our milk comes from, and uh, we would love to. So we, on many cases, we stay on, on the farms as well, you know. Like um, in November, for example, we are going down to the Cherry Festival in Fixburg, and there we stay for two nights on a, on a working farm outside the, the town of Klokkelan in Fixburg, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, we go right into the heart of the, the Platteland and we eat their local food and their local meat. Yeah, so this is our, uh, the logo that you've just seen. And I've mentioned to you, I've got a few pictures about our recent Namakalan tour. This is a picture of uh, on the way just outside of Uppington. Uh, many people that have traveled in that area would uh, recall this uh, 
you know, the, the way with um, nest, uh, the way with, yeah, mm. the nest. Um, and uh, it is so, so beautiful, you know, when you see this. And interesting enough, you know, this is right next to that new key polar electrical station, you know, where the sun is used to generate I know, electricity. Jan, I know Cape. exactly where this picture was taken, and I'll tell you why. Because we went down, that TV shoot we were busy on was with that solar array, which is just outside Porfida. And we'd flown into Uppington. Uh, people yeah, may, yeah. may know that in Uppington, there's a statue of a donkey. Um, Correct. That, that, that uh, recognizes the work that the donkeys have done. Also, the, uh, the Uppington Airport is an international airport because the runway is used for high-speed testing for international car companies um, high, and high-altitude testing. Um, but the problem is for us, when we drove from Uppington to Porfada, there were three of us, all of us are photographers, and we worked out that the furthest we drove without one of us going, stop, 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 there's a photographic yeah. opportunity, was one and a yeah. half kilometers. <laughs> it is took us so? forever to get yeah. uh, to Porfada. Coming back, we, we had limitations on time because, of course, we had a flight to catch. But That's right. that road, yeah. that particular back road to Uppington that then goes on to Springbok, I think, as well. It's Correct. almost 100%. dead straight, but it has got such interesting stuff on the side yeah. um, to stop and have a look at. But now you're right. And I think what I can add to that is that, you know, this was the Immaculate Flowers Tour. Mm -hmm. But we, we've visited so many other things as well. And this is what I normally say, is that when we... When we go to the flowers, or let, let's say when we go to Namakuland, the flowers are actually a bonus. There mm. are so many other things to be seen. And like you said, you know, between Uppington and in, in Springbok, you know, we, we, we went to Pella as well, you know, and uh, of course, Aachen Nice. And uh, you just mentioned about the, 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 the cars being tested, you know, the Europe, the, the Mercedes, the BMWs, the mm. Audis. I don't think many people know that there is actually a 17 kilometer track just outside of Pofada behind the mountains. Um, people don't know about it. Mm. It's high tech. And of course, you're not allowed to enter the ground, you know, so yeah. you, you, you know about it. It is behind the hills, but you're not allowed to, to go there. Yeah. So there's many, many hidden gems, um, yeah. like I said, you know. Oh, it's, this is just one of the places we stop. I think this is very familiar with many people on the way down to uh, um, to just outside of Kakamas. You know, the pink patsal. This is just a place where you have to stop. But just again, emphasizing uh, um, what I've said before, we visit the small places and we stop at the small places. But you know, um, Johan, of course, hang on, yeah. hang on, slow, slow, slow down, slow down. Go back to the pink pot okay. style, if you would, for me. Yes, we all will do. Thank you. Years ago, and it wasn't the pink pot style. Years ago, when I was still on radio, um, I did an interview with a woman who ran one of these little pot styles outside of Cape Town. And uh, on a trip to Cape Town, I decided to take the wife and my daughter. We hiked off the 200 kilometers to this woman's pot style because she said she had the best burgers in the world. We got there. They were probably the worst burgers any of us have ever eaten. <laughs> but shame, she was yeah. so nice. And she gave us, she plied us with cookies and Buddha biscuit and all that type of stuff when we left, all of which was terrible. Um, and we, we, gave, we gave them away along, along the road Those home. So I'm a yeah. little weary. But that being said, places like this one, um, that are well known and highly respected by travelers. Yeah. I've stopped at some of these and all like with this donkey outside, for instance. Um, it's yeah. part of what makes the, the landscape here in South Africa just that little bit more special, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get lekker cookies in, inside here. There's probably nice uh, coconut ice and fudge and all those sort of things heck, aside, exactly. aside from the, the cookies and the food. <laughs> No, you're right. You know, I'm, it, it, it immediately reminds me of uh, Chris's Mir, you know, in Mpumalanga, the, the, mm. the putt stall in, in town as you enter on the right hand side from the Joburg side. Yeah. There I bought some uh, Makatan jam, you know, and it is, it is just so delicious, you know, yeah. and it's not the same taste as what you buy maybe no. in, in, a, in a store in Joburg, you know. Not at yeah, all. So, 
they they've got a role to play you know in, yeah. in in i would like to say now he's too this is part of 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 our country you know let me go to the next next yes, picture please. because i think we, we're going to talk for hours um, <laughs> of course we went down to the macaulay to see the flowers and this is just one of the pictures you know mm. of uh, what what it looked like this year you know i've been going down to the macaulay for the past plus minus 21 years every year sometimes two or three tours per per season you know wow, okay and I must admit, this was the best in the last two decades that we have they seen. They said right, it was spectacular. Right from the top, Okip, all the way down Springbok, down to Kamiskroen, to Garis, to Bitterfontein, to Niveris. It, it was just beautiful. This was just taken outside of Skilpat. Many of your your um, uh, viewers would, would maybe remember it or, or recall it. But uh, you see the dirt roads, and this is what I want to emphasize. We do ride dirt roads as well on our tours, but not difficult roads, not 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 technical routes, mm. easy to drive routes, you know. But let's let let me move on. There you can see, you know, this wow. is uh, it is just so beautiful. And this was all all these pictures you're seeing were taken with normal um, cell phones. I, I I had a professional lady with me, but just to share with the people. This is the pictures they can take as well, you know, mm. on our tours. You don't need to have a very expensive uh, camera. Um, this, of course, the quiver trees in the Macaulay. Those are stunning. You know, it, 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 is, it is so beautiful, you know, and uh, I, I can talk about this for, for hours. So, you know, Johan, uh, you, no, don't, don't speed through. Don't speed. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> Relax. Go back. Uh, again, um, you want to see it again. <laughs> well, it's not again. Uh, that speaks of Africa. You know, people go, oh, the Eiffel Tower or Tower Bridge in London or the Empire State Building. Forget all of those people. New York, Paris, Rome, you don't need any of that. All you've got to do yeah. is take yourself down to a place like this where you can sit and just be at one with nature and look at these trees and realize that they've been there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Yeah. And this, the, the history that they have witnessed um, we will never really? know. We really yeah, and truly will. Yeah. It's a spectacular image. It really and truly is. No, thanks. Thanks so much. I'll give credit to the uh, to the lady who took this picture. It was it's my wife, Lenny. You know, she's um, she took this picture. The the other thing I would like to say, you know, many people say, why must I go on a tour with some other people, or why must I be part of a, of an organized tour? Of course, anyone can drive his or her own car, or they can make their own plans. One of the benefits of traveling with people like us or any other one, you know, any tour operator, mm -hmm. is that they normally take you to people or, or to places that you don't know about. And this is, I'm repeating myself, I heard this from people on this tour that have been to the flowers. They said, listen, Johan, we thought we've seen the Macaulay, but now we've seen the real yeah. Macaulay. And especially now that you're driving your own car. You know, we, we can go to places where buses cannot go because a bus, you know, you must always look at the height about trees, mm -hmm. about the width of the road, about the quality of the road. On this trip, I mean, we did the back roads and we, we could stop at any place. If there was a, a bunch of flowers or a small river, this is where we stopped. Like yeah. this place. I mean, you cannot get to this place with a bus. But with all the cars on this tour, in this convoy, we could drive right up to this and uh, we could uh, we could take this beautiful picture. Just to speak into um, um, a moment on that, how many vehicles do you allow uh, on a trip? Oh, good, valid question. We uh, allow maximum 10 vehicles uh, for, for many good reasons. Um, firstly, it is that uh, we've got 11 radio sets. Uh, it means <laughs> that I will be I will be driving in front. And maybe to explain what I mean with the radio set is that this is a two-way radio system, high frequency. We put it in each car. It means that I will be guiding or leading from the leading car. And all the people following me, they will be, they will be guided. They will get mm. information along as we drive, like you normally have in a bus. Yeah. But now you're sitting in your own car. You can hear clearly. You can hear well. And even if you stop for a, for, for a picture quickly, you know, um, and the rest of the convoy is driving on, we still have contact with you because that radio has got a span between 10 and 20 kilometers. So it's okay. high, good quality radios, you know. So this guy will say, for example, we had it in one occasion, we said, please, I, I just need to stop. Well, this was for a body break. 
but uh, just keep going i will catch up you know of course we don't speak you know we we travel mm. we we enjoy and and even people that are used to let's say they travel normally at 100 to 450 100 to 40 kilometers per hour now we travel maximum 120 when in town maximum 60 and they came to me afterwards and say listen i i experienced this positively to drive within mm. the speed limit you know because <laughs> now i'm relaxed i've got time to look around yeah and i don't need to worry i don't get lost i just follow you you know it's so it's the journey and not the destination that is important on 100 that, that is that is so and that is why we call these tours of us we call them road trips yeah it is it is something different to a tour and i don't want to dwell too long on it but it is relaxing. It is suitable for people from all ages, you know, to mm. all the destinations. We are talking about the Macoland now, but wherever we go, you know, this was an eight day tour, but some of our tours are three days or mm. four days, you know, just a, a quick breakaway, leave on a Friday, come back on a Monday. Cherry Foots Festival, we leave on a Friday morning, we come back on a, on a Sunday. Unfortunately for your viewers, our Cherry Festival tour is, is already fully booked. You know, I would love to take more, but of course, uh, the the accommodation is limitation on the farm yeah. as well. So we are we are to capacity at the moment. Okay. I would love to take more, but it is not practical. But we'll talk about that towards the end of our chat. So let's Correct. move along because I know you've got other pretty pictures to show us. Yeah, oh, this is just uh, just um, another one. This was taken at Wuppertal, and you probably know that last year, uh, no, no, in thirty first of December twenty eighteen, mm. there was a huge fire in Wuppertal. Wuppertal being a very small village, a uh, missionary village right. outside the town of Klein William in the Cedarberg mountain range. They had a huge fire. Now, of course, in the meantime, they've started to rebuild it. This was just a picture to see what the, the hall, the community hall looks like. But if you go there, like we did now, you can still see, you know, the, the devastation of the fire mm. that they had. But the good news is they are busy preparing their time. Great. You know, so uh, we love going there. We used to stop there for scones and tea. You know, <laughs> at the at the small shop. It is just it is just beautiful world. And this is of course very close to Bido Valley. Beautiful um, um, flowers again this year. Yeah. You know, so oh, so just to tell it, uh, and again repeating myself, David, is that. When you're going down to the Macaland, you don't only look for the flowers, you look at whatever they have to offer. This is the Sishin Saldana railway line, the bridge, the, the second longest bridge, uh, railway bridge in South Africa, the highest bridge in South Africa. And this is just outside of Frenendal, um, over the Olifants Refie. Right. So, uh, so uh, we share some information about, and of course, we stay in a, a lot so very close to this bridge. When I say close, without... Uh, um, no, not without, uh, not too close so that it, mm -hmm. it bothers you, but you can see the train in a distance, you know, when yeah. it does, when it does cross the bridge. So but it's, again, it's quite an experience. But again, Johan, you overnight at a place where there's a midnight train that runs through. Um, and the sound of the train, it might wake you, but what the heck, you know, in an urban situation, you've got hardy does, they wake you um, <laughs> in the early hours of the True. morning and the rest True. of the day. So listening to a train whistle blowing um, almost yeah. mournfully in the middle of the night is, again, yeah. one of those things that makes this sort of touring just that little bit more special and brings back many, many more memories um, once the tour is finished. No, you're 100% correct. You know, people sit on, on the veranda of this um, guest house where we are or where we stayed. And they count the number of trucks of the train, you know, and it, it, it adds up over 400. So yeah. it does it does amuse um, <laughs> some people, you know, looking at, at the train. No, you, you are, and, you know, this place where we stay is right on the banks of the Willifons River between the vineyards, you know, the mm. grape vineyards. So it is so special, you know, like I say, our country has got so much to offer, you know, and me and you, we are fortunate we've traveled the country. But there are still many places that I've never been to, yep. and there are and there are many places that I like going back to, you yeah. know, because Namakoland every year is different. Mm. Just another picture. Oh, this is out, outside of at Nivoville, you know, at Mikey Sunday Plaza, 
Uh, this is not your overnight to... accommodation for your guests, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this, uh, this is just one of the places where we normally stop for lunch. And they, they serve uh, what they call a tomati brieri. Mm. Or they uh, or they serve uh, what is the other one? Oh, some some offal as well. Mm. And and the third one, the possibility is normally a, a springbok okay. um, stew as well. You know, so you you just have to eat. And and the place where we eat is the old school. It's a three room school, but the one the one room is the stable, the second one is the classroom, and the, <laughs> the third room is where the teacher used to stay. And this building is. I think 180 years old. Wow. You know? Okay. It is so. It is so special. Yeah. And this is, of course, is the bulb capital of the world. Yeah. You know this this specific farm where we go to. So well, you can see in a distance the flowers. It is mm. just uh, unbelievable. Very close to that same oh, place as well, that. outside of 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 Newburgh. Now it was like I mentioned. It was a very special year. And then of course uh, Newburgh waterfall. This is not the big fall. The big fall is just a little bit to the left. Um, this is what they call the small fall, the Klein Faliki, the new mm -hmm. fall. But but you know, there's always water, and it's it, even if the Makulant is dry, there is water. You okay. know, and meaning meaning there's life. And I think I've got one. Yeah, this is the last picture that we've taken on the tour. This is in Calvinia, Calvinia, mm -hmm. meat country. Uh, with this huge, massive uh, postal box, you know. Does, um, does that post box actually work? Can you post a letter there? Yes, you can. If you okay. if you long enough and huge <laughs> enough to get to the top. <laughs> if if you, I do if this you tour with you, I've got news for you, Jan. I'm putting <laughs> I'm putting a collapsible ladder into the back of my vehicle. Good. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Now, if you look, if you follow my cursor, you see there on uh, the left. There we go. Yeah. There's a small postal box, and of course, it is a unique stamp that you will get onto your onto your envelope. But okay. it, yeah, that that is still operational. Obviously, the big one is uh, is something for for pictures, you know. Yeah, yeah. So this is a few pictures about um, El Calvinia. Like I said, we've taken thousands of pictures, but I think it will give you viewers an idea that wherever you go, if it is a Macoland or if it is Mumalanga, High Felt, or Low Felt, or Bush Felt, is uh, every region has got something to mm -hmm. offer. In this beautiful country, you know, and uh, I think the way that we are hosting our tours now, like I say, the self drive in your own car uh, with the leadership um, of someone in the front with the radio system, we sleep in good places, you know, people like it. I can just share with you that uh, three of the couples that uh, went on the Namakulan tour with us. They immediately book on the Cherry Festival tour <laughs> after the Namakla. And they are bringing along the children and grandchildren. So I think the, the way of traveling, it is appealing to, to many mm. people because, because you cannot travel in a bus at the moment because of COVID, but you can travel in your own car, you know, and you can listen yeah. to your own music. You can put on the aircon or the heater, whatever. You, and of course, you can eat your own chips or your biscuits or whatever. <laughs> in, in you don't front. have to share. And you, you don't have to share your biltong with anybody. Exactly, unless when we stop, and that is the nice thing. The moment when we stop at certain places and we talk again, everyone will will, will get out of their vehicles and they will bring a biscuit or something to share with someone else. You know, so the the people become a a, a touring family mm. very quickly. You know, in this mode of travel. Yeah. yeah, so this this was the Macaland. I've got a few more pictures that I can sure. share with you about um, <laughs> the, the, the low felt. You probably remember old Joe yeah, in Schumann's Kloof, yes. or actually at, at Patat's Neck. Um, this this is uh, a tour that we did uh, last week. And of course, it was raining in the low felt. But despite this, you know, the, the low felt is still beautiful. And we, we stop at this venue and we tell the story about old Joe, you know. Mm. And uh, people that travel that road um, regularly, they will tell you as well that old Joe is painted very regularly in the theme of the time that we're living in. For example, when the COVID started, old Joe was a nurse and later it became a, a medical doctor. Okay. And uh, in, tw in 2010, it was a soccer player. So there's a gentleman living in a village that uh, does this on an irregular basis, you know, um, okay. changing the, 
mm -hmm. the face and the color of, of old Joe. That's so this is one of the places. Yeah, they, there are so many stories in the low yeah. to, to be told as well. Of course, you know, um, when you talk low felt, you talk about um, waterfalls, mm. uh, the, the Berlin, the Mac Mac, the Lisbon. This is this waterfall, and this is just a part of it, is one that many people do not know about. And it's called Wonderkloof. Right. And it's not, it's not on a main road. You have to follow a dirt road, a gravel road to get to this, but most beautiful. So we take the people to this place as well, you know, to show them the off the normal road places mm. um, as, as well, on suitable roads, you know, yes. and you, we take them into the forest, etc. This is the sort of roads that we follow. Okay, so you, on, don't, on necess you don't necessarily need a four by four. You're not going to, as you said, do, pardon me, do technical off-roading, but they must just be aware that you, you need a bit of ground clearance on your vehicle. Yeah, that, that is so, you, and you're 100% correct, you know, and uh, we, you don't need four by four. It is not technical. We're not making it difficult. And if there's any possibility that it is unsafe, of course, we will stop and we will turn around and follow an alternative road. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as, as David, as much as you or anybody else, you, you don't like to, 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 to have problems in road en route mm. with, your, with your vehicle. Neither do I as the leader of the tour. So we, we travel the back roads, but not difficult. You know, we take okay. you to the beautiful places like, like, you, like you see. Uh, and you can, you can see it uh, at, at, at the condition of the road. Mm. It is a good quality road uh, as well. This place you probably know in Pelgrim's Rest. Yep. <laughs> the Royal There's Hotel. There's always yeah. a Royal Hotel. Doesn't yeah, matter yeah, what yeah. town you go to in small town South Africa. There's altijd een van jullie. Well, that's true. And the other thing that you find in every town is a church street. Yes. Kekstraat. <laughs> you know, so that's 100%. And I, I must admit, you know, Pelgrim, Pelgrim Rest, um, it, it, was, it was a very popular tourist destination for many years. You know, mm. many buses stopping there. And then it went down. I must admit it went down. But I must say now, it is coming back. It is improving it is looking better. So I would like to, you know, for your viewers to say it is worthwhile going back to, to, to Pelgrim first after this period of about a decade where okay. it was not in, in, in good condition. Ah, just some of the nature that you will experience okay. down in, in, in the low felt. Um, this is one of the places where we sleep. It is in the Long Tom Pass, mm. you know, between, between Leidenberg and, and, and Sabi. This is the type of place that we look for wherever we go, is to, to it must add value to the life of the people on tour. You know, you can imagine sitting on this veranda, on this stoop, having this view. Sometimes it is clear skies, sometimes it is misty and foggy, but it is just so... Yeah. You know, it is just yeah, exactly. giving you energy and peace of mind. It is it, just, uh, you know, the, the low field, our country is just so beautiful, you know. And, and people must never think that they are too old to travel. Mm. Uh, we, we, we've had people on this tour in their 70s. The only thing is you must be able to, to, dr to, to drive your own car, you know. Yeah. And you must be able to travel. And we don't speed, but you must be able to, to travel for... Not so much distance, but it's very likely that you will spend a big part of the day in your car. Of course, we stop often and regular. We go to toilets and we drink a cup of coffee and we enjoy a small lunch, etc. But people must be able to, to drive for, for the day, you know, uh, at an enjoyable speed, etc. Yeah. yeah, so uh, Platteland Tours is there for the normal man on the street, you know, for whoever would like to, to travel in a safe environment because it is important nowadays. And when you travel five to 10 vehicles in a convoy, it is much more safer than in your own car. You know that you won't get lost. We, we do a lot of homework prior to our tours to make sure that we don't stop at places that is unsafe, etc. Uh, we check the roads, the quality. So we, we trust that uh, people traveling with us will have a good experience and that they rediscover or discover parts of their country that they have either never seen or they haven't been there for, for ages. So this is another purpose of Platland Tours, is to take people 
into into the countryside. It's it's tremendous. Uh, Jan, was that your last image? Because if it is, can we go back to full screen? So uh, we yes, we can do so. Website. Yeah. No, I think this is the the very last one. Yeah. Uh, stop sharing. That's it. Back so, to normal. <laughs> Whatever the normal is nowadays. <laughs> Firstly, thank yeah. you so very much for sharing that. It it makes me salivate. It really and truly does. It makes me want to get into my car now and just drive, you know, get to a street corner and pick left or right until I get into, into the middle of nowhere. I love the fact that you're not using the inroads because the inroads are designed to get you from place A to place B quickly, but with absolutely no character at all. They're invariably boring and it, you know, there's, there's nothing much to see on the side of the road. It's the smaller roads, it's the back roads that you talk about which is where people need to be. So with that in mind, um, tell us a bit about your website. Tell us about the tours that you've got coming up between now and possibly the end of the year, because you're, you are going to feature again, because there's so much that you can share with my viewers that I want to bring you back again so that we can chat about 2021. So what have you got planned sort of November, December 2020? Yeah? Thanks so much for uh, for the opportunity again, David. Um, you know, it's, it's a privilege talking about these places. And uh, to tell you what we have got left, I've mentioned to you the the Cherry Festival. Unfortunately, that tour, not unfortunately for me, that. very fortunate. You keep, you keep saying, oh, we've got the Cherry. Oh, I'm sorry it's full. I'm sorry it's yeah, full. Yeah. Stop talking about okay. the festival. You, we're not going there. Yeah. Nobody yeah, can do that's, there. The 11 cars yeah, so finished. That, Cherry Festival one, next year. Book it now. Right. The, the, the other one what we have is what we call Mpumalanga Highfield. It's a mm. four-day tour that is uh, in November as well. And th there we go to, again, to small places. Like, you know, the, the biggest town that we will be visiting is Volkswest, to give you right. an indication. But we, we, we go to Wackerström. I don't know if yeah. you've ever been there. Most most beautiful, especially in summer. We, we go to Amersfoort, to Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to to fall, you know, fear R L V A L fall. Yeah, we like I mentioned, Chris is me. Eventually, we 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 end up in Barberton and we come back via uh, via Bad Plus. You know that that route. Okay. Every night, every night in a different place. Good roads, good quality, and a few hidden gems. And I'm not going to spoil it now that we have on that tour. You know, I'm, I can guarantee places that people have never seen, never heard about. Uh, it is it is just beautiful even visiting some farms again mm -hmm. uh, at at one place it's uh, uh, there will be a lot of horses we eat a real traditional bure marag eater you know a lunch real prepared proper by life. the farmer the lady oh, a proper proper bure course you know and so that that is the one tour then we have another one to to the lowfeld i'll give the the website now um that, that is end of October. So this is a bit quick. It is the 26th, and I think this broadcast is only after. Yeah, I think so we'll go out probably. It'll be too late for that one. That's, that's right. Yeah. We talk November, December. That, that's right. Then, um, gee, I'm thinking now from the top of my head. The, oh, and the Eastern Free State one as well. This is where we go to places like Clarence, Friesburg, mm -hmm. to... Uh, to uh, Witzishoek, you know, next to Kwakwa in the, in the Dragonsburg. Right. Uh, that's a, a four-day one as, as well, for, if I remember from the Friday to the Monday. So, yeah, it's about one tour per month for the rest of the year. Okay. Uh, maybe just more. And then, of course, for 2021, we will have a bigger variety. We will have longer tours. Um, one that I believe that will be very popular would be one to the Eastern Cape, um, to places like like Rhodes, mm. Hogsback, New Bethesda, you know, beautiful oh, places. Most my beautiful home places. province, the Eastern Cape. You talk, you're oh, talking so? to my heart now. Can I, can oh, I book so? now, Johan? I want, to, <laughs> I, want to be, I want to be in car number two. <laughs> yeah, you, you're most welcome. Yeah, no, we, let, let's talk about it, you know. So, you know, and we've got plans for the, the, the um, that's now for next year, 2020, mm -hmm. for the for the Bushveld. We've got a Bushveld one visiting uh, places like uh, Tabazimbi and um, Lepalale and um, Falwater, but, but doing some mountain passes as well on gravel roads. Okay. 
uh, like I say, the, the back roads. And then, of course, the, the Limpopo Lowfeld as well, places like Zemin and Hed Hennetsburg and Davelskloof. Mm. So there's quite a variety. We, we've had many inquiries about Namibia, you know, and, and I've been to Namibia many, many times and Botswana, etc. And it, it will come. You know, yeah. it is just a matter of we, we have to develop it. You know, it is not a matter of sitting down one night and the next day you've got the tour. We have to put it together, build it up. So maybe with our next chat sometime in future, I would be able to say this is what we have available for 2021. But isn't it amazing, Johan? You start this company virtually from scratch on the back of JMB train tours. And now people are really saying, but what about? We want to go here. We want to go there. Baby steps, people. Why do you want to leave the country? Stay in South Africa. It's called Platalon Tours for a reason. He wants to visit the Platalon. Namibia is a whole different kettle of fish. Yes, it's stunning and beautiful, but let's Namibian tourism wait. Let's, let's support South African tourism. Let's use organizations or companies like Johans to support local from start to finish. Whether you're buying petrol in a small town or you're stopping to buy a cool drink at a cafe, you are giving work to somebody local who maybe is struggling um, because of COVID and because of the economic situation. So let's keep it within our borders. Um, Namibia can wait. Let's, to, to, quote, to quote an American president that I don't particularly like, let's make South Africa great again. And that's what we need to do. And so let's, let's keep the tourism internal. The external will come at a later stage. Um, Johan, the website for people who want right. to, to book now. Yeah, thanks so much. The website is a normal www.platalandtours, you know, with the S at the end, platalandtours.co.za. Yeah. Alternatively, of course, you can send an email to info at platalandtours.co.za or you can phone me on a cell phone number on 082-920-6908. And, uh, you know, that is 24-7. We don't mind talking um, anytime <laughs> because, you know, we, we love what we do. So that is, I take a call Listen, whenever you call. I was about to say, I'm going to phone you at 2 o'clock in the morning and see if you, firstly, if you answer <laughs> and see if you speak to me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you may so. Well. Can I just share with you at the end, you know, yeah. you, you talk about what we have in our country. We've got a, we've got a two-day tour in Gauteng. Mm -hmm. traversing all 14 mountain passes. Did you know that there are 14 mountain passes in Gauteng? In Gauteng? No. I really didn't. Right. Well, now I've Come learned. Our... No, yeah, that's right. And uh, like I said, we've put this together. You know, there's so much in Gauteng to be seen by just by driving. I'm not talking about stopping and telling, just yeah. by observing, yeah. And, you, okay. and, and the last thing, three of these mountain passes are in Johannesburg. But let's talk about that later. Well, there's homework for people. <laughs> yeah. I, I should imagine Monroe Drive could be seen as a mountain pass. 100 percent. That that is an official mountain pass. You're kidding. 97, 97 meters long. <laughs> <laughs> I've both yeah. I've both driven that, cycled it, and run it. Okay. The only Good, thing I yeah. haven't done is canoed up it <laughs> or down okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's Johan, it. That's do me a favor. Before I say thank you very much for, for having joined me with uh, this uh, particular in conversation with chat that we've had this morning, why don't you give out your details once again? I don't mind, um, obviously. And uh, the, the website is www.platalandtours.co.za. The email address is info at platalandtours.co.za. And then if you would like to call, it is 082-920-6908. And uh, David, we are looking forward in welcoming your viewers, their family, their friends, sharing our beautiful country with them and all the hidden gems en route. Johan? Thank you so much for being on In Conversation with me this morning. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And I look forward to traveling, not only with you, but to chatting to you again in 2021.